Krishna, everyone. Here we are. You may be getting bored of the scene. <laughs> We're locked down. And it's cold outside. Well, I don't think it's that cold, but it's my wife is concerned we might get arrested on camera if we sit in the <clears> park <throat> and read, so. Yes, we can't do it during lockdown. So, we'll do it here instead. So, <coughs> it's Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 5, Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. So, it's um, Sukadev Goswami answering the questions that Maharaj Pariksha has put forward, like loads of them. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Right, text five. Lord Brahma, the first spiritual master, supreme in the universe, could not trace out the source of his lotus seat. And while thinking of creating the material world, he could not understand the proper direction for such creative work. Nor could he find out the process for such creation. Poor, poor. This verse is the prelude for explaining the transcendental nature of the form and the abode of the Lord. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it has already been said that the supreme absolute truth exists in his own abode, without any touch of the deluding energy. Therefore, the kingdom of God is not a myth, but factually a different and transcendental sphere of planets known as the Vaikuntas. This will also be explained in this chapter. <clears throat> um, before continuing to read, just a reminder that this ninth chapter, this is a really important chapter of the Bhagavatam, um, it's the first instance in which uh, it's described and explained Lord Brahma and his creation and how he comes to be the creator. <clears throat> and also this is, the ver this is the chapter in which the uh, Bhagavatam uh, Chatur Shloki is spoken. The four seed verses of the Bhagavatam will be spoken and when we get to that, then we can uh, point out that these are those seed verses and the purports are relatively long there. And uh, what that means, Chetur Shloki, is it means four seed verses, uh, the four shlokas that contain everything that's in the Bhagavatam. So like that, very important chapter. Mm -hmm. Continuing with the, the purport. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Such knowledge of the spiritual sky far above this material sky and its paraphernalia can be known only by dint of devotional service or bhakti yoga. The power of creation by Lord Brahma was also achieved by bhakti yoga. Brahmaji was bewildered in the matter of creation, and he could not even trace out the source of his own existence. But all this knowledge was fully achieved by him through the medium of bhakti yoga. But by bhakti yoga, one can know the Lord, and by knowing the Lord is the supreme, one is able to know everything else. One who knows the supreme knows everything else. That is the version of all the Vedas. Even the first spiritual master of the universe was enlightened by the grace of the Lord. So, who else can attain perfect knowledge of everything without the mercy of the Lord? If anyone desires to seek perfect knowledge of everything, he must seek the mercy of the Lord. And there is no other means. So, uh, sorry, to seek knowledge on the strength of one's personal attempt is a sheer waste of time. Interesting. <coughs> Text 6. While thus engaged in thinking in the water, Brahmaji heard twice from nearby two syllables joined together. One of the syllables was taken from the 16th and the other from the 21st of the Sparsa alphabets, and both joined to become the wealth of the renounced order of life. In Sanskrit language, the consonant alphabets are divided into two divisions, namely the Sparsa Varnas and the Tal. Talavya Vanas. From Ka to Ma, the letters are known as the Sparsa Vanas, and the 16th of the group is called Ta, whereas the 21st letter is called Pa. 
So when they are joined together, the word tapa or penance is constructed. This penance is the beauty and wealth of the Brahmanas and the renounced knowledge of life. Mm. According to Bhagavatam philosophy, every human being is meant simply for this tapa and for no other business. Mm. Because by penance only can one realize his self. And self-realization, not sense gratification, is the business of human life. Mm. This tapa or penance was begun from the very beginning of the creation. And it was first adopted by the Supreme Spiritual Master, Lord Brahma. By tapasya only can one get the benefit or the profit of human life, and not by a polished civilization of animal life. Mm. The animal does not know anything except sense gratification in the jurisdiction of eat, drink, be merry and enjoy. But the human being is made to undergo tapasya for going back to Godhead, back to home. Mm. Very interesting. Tapa. Mm. So nice <clears throat> the way it's phonetically explained. Uh, Prabhupada phonetically explains the Sanskrit terms ta and pa in accordance with the with this verse. Mm. But also the principle of tapasya or the principle of penance is mentioned and how only by penance um, or tapasya, some austerity are real fruits in spiritual life are born, not by this polished animal society of eat, drink, and be merry. Mm. Sorry to say. <clears throat> when Lord Brahma was perplexed about how to construct the material manifestations in the universe and went down within the water to find out the means and the source of his lotus seat, he heard the word tapa vibrated twice. Taking the path of tapa is the second birth of the desiring disciple. Sorry, taking the path of tapa is the second birth of, desi of the desiring disciple. The word upashrinat is very significant. It is similar to upanayana, or bringing the disciple nearer to the spiritual master for the path of tapa. <coughs> So Brahmaji was thus initiated by Lord Krishna, and this fact is corroborated by Brahmaji himself in his book, the Brahma Samhita. In the Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma has sung in every verse, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Thus Brahma was initiated by the Krishna mantra by Lord Krishna himself, and thus he became a Vaishnava, or a devotee of the Lord, <clears throat> before he was able to construct the huge universe. It is stated in the Brahma Samhita that Lord Brahma was initiated into the 18-letter Krishna mantra, which is generally accepted by all devotees of Lord Krishna. We follow the same principle because we belong to the Brahma Sampradaya, directly in the disciplic chain from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyas, from Vyas to Madhva Muni, and from Madhva Muni to Mahavendra Puri, or Madhavendra Puri, and from Madhavendra Puri to Ishwara Puri, from Ishwara Puri to Lord Chaitanya, and gradually to His Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, our Divine Master. One who is thus initiated in a disciplic succession is able to achieve the same result of power of creation. Chanting of this holy mantra is the only shelter of the desire of the <coughs> devotee of the Lord. Simply by such a partial penance, the devotee of the Lord achieves all perfections like Lord Brahma. Very nice statement. So here it's being explained, first of all, that Lord Brahma was initiated. Um, and the word is upanayana, which means to bring closer to the spiritual master. And it says that Lord Brahma was given an 18-syllable mantra. And then Prabhupada explains how we're coming in the same sampradaya or disciplic succession from Lord Brahma. So therefore, we also have a mantra. And that mantra has been given to us by the spiritual master. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Of course, Brahman-initiated uh, uh, devotees also get other mantras. 
but this is this maha mantra this is the great mantra for deliverance and the penance that we have to undergo is simply to chant this mantra regularly repetitively so like this uh, that's our tapasya to chant mm -hmm. Hare Krishna any mm -hmm. thoughts yeah it's true <laughs> and all that comes with it <coughs> yes chant and be happy <laughs> okay. so text seven when we heard the sound he tried when he heard the sound he tried to find the speaker searching on all sides but when he was unable to find anyone besides himself he thought it wise to sit down on his lotus seat firmly and give his attention to the execution of penance as he was instructed purport to achieve success in life one should follow the example of lord brahma the first living creature in the beginning of creation after being initiated by the supreme lord to execute tapasya he was fixed in his determination to do it and although he could not find anyone besides himself he could rightly understand that the sound was transmitted by the Lord himself. Brahma was the only living being at that time because there was no other creation and none could be found there. Sorry, and none could be found there except himself. In the beginning of the first canto in the first chapter, first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it has already been mentioned that Brahma was initiated by the Lord from within. Yeah. The Lord is within every living entity as a super soul, and he initiated Brahma because Brahma was willing to receive the initiation. The Lord can similarly initiate everyone who is inclined to have it. As already stated, Brahma is the original spiritual master for the universe, and since he was initiated by the Lord himself, the message of Srimad Bhagavatam is coming down by discipline from the session. <coughs> and in order to receive the real message of Srimad Bhagavatam, one should approach the current link or spiritual master in the chain of discipline succession. After being initiated by the proper spiritual master in that chain of succession, one should engage himself in the discharge of tapasya in the execution of devotional service. One should not, however, think himself <coughs> you. should not think himself on the level <coughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Should not think himself on the level of Brahma to be initiated directly by the Lord from inside, because in the present age no one can be accepted to be as pure as Brahma. Hmm. The post of Brahma to officiate in the creation of the universe is offered to the most pure living being. Unless one is so qualified, one cannot expect to be treated like Brahmaji directly. But one can have the same facility through unalloyed devotees of the Lord, through scriptural instructions, as revealed in the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam especially, and also through the bona fide spiritual master available to the sincere soul. The Lord himself appears as a spiritual master to a person who is sincere in heart about serving the Lord. Therefore, the bona fide spiritual master who happens to meet the sincere devotee should be accepted as the most confidential and beloved representative of the Lord. If a person is posted under the guidance of such a bona fide spiritual master, it may be accepted without any doubt that the desiring person has achieved the grace of the Lord. Mm, that's powerful, that last statement. Huh? Yes, that means we have achieved the grace of the Lord. We who? We, you us, yes. Okay, how? Because we have a bona fide spiritual master. <laughs> I'm not saying that in no one else, I'm just saying it made me feel like, wow, I, need, I received grace because of my spiritual master. Yeah, that's, that's true. I didn't mean that, you know. It's not meant in a condescending way. No, 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 or divide way. or whatever. Yeah, but I just felt means... that, like, wow, that's blessings. Wow, feel blessed, yeah, it's great. <clears throat> okay, text 8. Lord Brahma underwent penances for 1,000 years by the calculations of the demigods. Anyone want to do the mass on that? How it long does it, it in the fourth book. Oh, does it? Okay, great. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
For 1,000 years, by the calculations of the demigods, he heard this transcendental vibration from the sky, and he accepted it as divine. Thus, he controlled his mind and senses, and the penances he executed were a great lesson for the living entities. Thus, he is known as the greatest of all ascetics. Purport. Lord Brahma heard the occult sound tapa, but he did not see the person who vibrated the sound, and still he accepted the instruction as beneficial for him, and therefore he engaged himself in meditation for 1,000 celestial years. One celestial year is equal to six times 30 times 12, times a thousand of our years. Now, how does that work? That's a rough calculation also. So, one celestial year is equal to six months. Um, uh, is that right? Nine months. I thought it was six months. Six, one celestial year. Because theirs is longer than ours. So it means like... It's a long time. Yeah, but see, six, six times 30 means six, six hmm, times a thousand of our years. I wrote, made a note. Calculation of one celestial year. <laughs> that wasn't a very good note. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my understanding is it's six months. Six of our months. Yeah, but mine is anyway, but time is equal to is one it? celestial year. Yeah, it's times, times thousand 30, of our years. Times twelve. Times. Oh, we'll have to look this up. Anyway. We'll look it up if you're yeah. interested. <laughs> His acceptance of the sound was due to his pure vision of the absolute nature of the Lord. And due to his correct vision, he made no distinction between the Lord and the Lord's instruction. Oh, it's a hold on, hold on. Happy birthday, Gopi Chandra. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday Sorry. to you. Have some cake on us. <laughs> not on us. Well, no, not no, no. <laughs> Virtual. Virtual cake. <clears throat> and due to his correct vision, he made no distinction between the Lord and the Lord's instruction. There is no difference between the Lord and sound vibration coming from him, even though he is not personally present. The best way of understanding is to accept such divine instruction. And Brahma, the prime spiritual master, sorry, the prime spiritual master of everyone, is a living example of this process of receiving transcendental knowledge. The potency of transcendental sound is never minimized because the vibrator is apparently absent. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or any revealed scripture in the world is never to be accepted as ordinary, mundane sound without transcendental potency. One has to receive the transcendental sound from the right source, accept it as a reality, and prosecute the direction without hesitation. That's not transcendental sound, but anyway. Oh, <laughs> the secret of success is to receive the sound from the right source of a bona fide spiritual master. <coughs> mundane manufactured sound has no potency. <laughs> like that. Why would I read it, right? Sorry. And as such, a seemingly transcendental sound received from an unauthorized person also has no potency. One should be qualified enough to discern such transcendental potency, and either by discriminating or by fortunate chance, if one is able to receive the transcendental sound from the bona fide spiritual master, his path of liberation is guaranteed. The disciple, however, must be ready to execute the order of the bona fide spiritual master as Lord Brahma executed the instruction of his spiritual master, the Lord himself. Following the order of the bona fide spiritual master is the only duty of the disciple. Mm. And this completely faithful <coughs> ex 
execution of the order of the bona fide spiritual master is the secret of success. Lord Brahma controlled the, his two grades of senses by means of sense perception and sense organs because he had to engage such senses in the execution of the order of the Lord. <coughs> Therefore, controlling the senses means engaging them in the transcendental service of the Lord. The Lord's order descends in disciplic succession through the bona fide spiritual master, and thus execution of the order of the bona fide spiritual master is factual control of the senses. Such execution of penance in full faith and sincerity made Brahmaji so powerful that he became the creator of the universe. And because he was able to attain such power, he is called the best among the tapasvis. Mm. Mm -hmm. Text 9. <clears throat> the personality of Godhead, being thus very much satisfied with the penance of Lord Brahma, was pleased to manifest his personal abode by Kunta, the supreme planet above all others. This transcendental abode of the Lord is adored by all self-realized persons, freed from all kinds of miseries and fear of illusory existence. Papa, the troubles of penance accepted by Lord Brahma were certainly in the line of devotional service, bhakti. Hmm. Otherwise, there was no chance that Vaikuntha or Swalokam, the Lord's personal abode, would become visible to Brahmaji. The personal abodes of the Lord, known as Vaikuntas, are neither mythical nor material, as conceived by the impersonalists. But realization of the transcendental abodes of the Lord is possible only through devotional service, and thus the devotees enter into such abodes. There is undoubtedly trouble in executing penance, but the trouble accepted in executing bhakti yoga is transcendental happiness from the very beginning, whereas the trouble of penance in other processes of self realization. Dhyana yoga, dhyana yoga, etc., without any open <coughs> to realization, ends in trouble only and nothing more. Hmm. There is no profit in biting husks without grains. Beating. Oh, mine's biting. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Similarly, <laughs> there is no profit in executing troublesome penances other than bhakti yoga for self realization. Executing. Bhakti yoga is exactly like sitting on the lotus sprouted out of the abdomen of the transcendental personality of Godhead. For Lord Brahma was seated there. Wow. <clears throat> so, executing bhakti yoga is just like Lord Brahma being seated on the lotus that is sprouted from the abdomen of Lord Vishnu. That's a, quite a statement. Mm -hmm. Brahmaji was able to please the Lord. And the Lord was also pleased to show Brahmaji his personal abode. Srila Jiva Goswami, in the comments of his Kramasandarbha annotation of Srimad Bhagavatam, cites quotations from the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad, Vedic, sorry, from the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad, Vedic evidence. <clears throat> it is said that Yajna Valkya described the transcendental abode <coughs> excuse me, of the Lord to Gargi. And that the abode of the Lord is situated above the highest planet of the universe named Brahmaloka. This abode of the Lord, although described in revealed scriptures, like the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, remains only a myth for the less intelligent class of men with a poor fund of knowledge. Herein, the word Swadrishtavad Bihi is very significant. One who has actually realized his self, his self realizes the transcendental form of oneself. And personal realization of self and the Supreme is not complete because it is just an opposite conception of material personalities. <coughs> Excuse me. The personality of Godhead and the personalities of the devotees of the Lord are all transcendental. They do not have material bodies. The material body is overcast with five kinds of miserable conditions. Hmm. Namely, ignorance, 
material conception, attachment, hatred, and absorption. <laughs> the material body is overcast with five kinds of miserable conditions. Ignorance, material conception, attachment, hatred, and absorption. As long as one is overwhelmed by these five kinds of material miseries, there is no question of entering into the Vaikuntha Lokas. Hmm. The impersonal conception of one's self is just the negation of material personality and is far from the positive existence of personal form. The personal forms of the transmittal abode will be explained in the following verses. Brahmaji also described the highest planet of the Vaikuntha Loka as Goloka Vrindavan, where the Lord resides as a cowherd boy, keeping transcendental Sarabi cows and surrounded by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. Chintamani prakarasad masukopa briksha laksha vrite shushuda beer abhipala yantam lakshmi sahasra shata sambrama sevyamanam govindavadi purusham tamaham bhajami. <clears throat> the statement of the Bhagavad Gita, Yad Gatvana Nivartante Tad Dharma Paramam Mama, is also confirmed herewith. Para, param means transcendental Brahman. Therefore, the abode of the Lord is also Brahman, non different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord is known as Vaikuntha, and his abode is also known as Vaikuntha. Mm. Such Vaikuntha realization and worship can be made possible by transcendental form and sense. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Any thoughts? No. It's interesting the statement the material body is covered with five kinds of miserable conditions. Mm -hmm. It's so true. You know, it's like you're constantly fighting to, you know, the, the body is temporary. It's, miserable you know because it's temporary it's miserable and because it ages and decays it's miserable <laughs> otherwise it's very powerful as well you can human the human being can achieve so much like just when i was well you know running <laughs> it's like i mean to run non-stop for an hour two hours i'm not saying i'm like an olympic runner but it's it's something it's like it can you know people can climb mountains or they can use their brains and all that to such an extent and create things but at the end of the day it's, it is a bag of misery because it doesn't always function the way you want it to and it does decay and it 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 will like break down and so yeah we need to stop being so attached to it and so attached to other people's bodies because the spirit souls we're like the brightest of brightest light bulbs and <laughs> it's like you're just covered you know someone's taking you away in this like really small black box or bag and you just can't get you know you're, you just can't shine this isn't the vehicle to shine in as such you know hmm. not fully anyway you can obviously <laughs> people do great things but as Prabhupada explains, you become, your body becomes prashada or spiritualized after mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. amount of years. And then, you, I guess, you that's when you start to shine. <coughs> Otherwise, mm. it's not the place to be. Really not. <laughs> well, I think it warrants some investigation. You know, it's like this. When we're reading the Bhagavatam, we come across statements that, for me, I think, where did that come from? And what does that mean exactly? Because these five kinds of miserable conditions, I mean, one might say, as Baba Bhakti was just mentioning, there might be 500 kinds of miserable conditions for the body. But these five are given specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, ignorance, okay, I think I understand that a little bit. The body is influenced by tamagun, which means, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's miserable. You know, Bhagavad Gita explains tamagun. Uh, ignorance is like basically um, suffering from beginning to end. Um, material conception. 
okay, I get that, but I would have thought that would be the same as ignorance, but it seems to be distinct. So the body can be influenced by the mode of ignorance, but at the same time, the material body suffers a misery, which is known as material conception. So that obviously is happening on the subtle platform, which is the false ego is identifying with the body. Okay, so that's material conception. Attachment. I mean, like you just mentioned, we have to stop being attached to our bodies, attached to other people's bodies, attached to things that we think. Look, the other day we were just reading I and mm -hmm. mine, you mm -hmm. know, that whole concept. This is mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I am this. I am that. Okay, mm -hmm. so I get that. Hatred. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I remember before coming to Krishna consciousness, reading a lot of kind of spiritual type of books and also um, looking into kind of self-help or self-development ideas and this concept of hate and how we can manifest hatred, you know, which kind of is the opposite of what Krishna is all about, really, if, if we get it. We're trying to develop prem, which is love, or at least come to the platform of bhava, which is love. You know, prema is pure, unadulterated love, but bhava is love. And really, from shraddha, from faith to prema, is just the development of our faith and or our love. So if somewhere inside of that hatred gets in, and we hate this, and we hate that, and we often find within our language, and we should be really understanding that language dictates a lot of the world and life that we live. So if we're, if we're communicating in a way that's, I hate this, I hate that, he hates me, she hates me, I hate them, I hate it when they do this, I hate, 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 then we're just generating that atmosphere around us. Okay, so I kind of get that as well, hatred. But the last one, an absorption. You know, that one kind of, what do you think absorption means? I took that similar to like attachment in the sense absorbed in the material ignorant condition way of life hmm. we are completely covered and this this is it this is what life is hmm. absorbed in the wrong thing of life you know okay yeah so i guess maya's job is to cover us over and pull us down hmm. and so we just become absorbed or wrapped up in or Prabhupada says more and more entangled in the complexities of material life so we become absorbed in that way because hmm. okay. we see as well sometimes very people have been practicing for quite a number of years and then um, something happens to a family member or this they're quite defensive or acting a way they think gosh that's not really renounced you know mm -hmm. because that tie is really strong you you and it gets tested obviously when obstacles or something is threatened you think i'm not yeah i know i'm not this body and i do so much service and then when it's so subtle so when something that's connected to the body my offspring spouse or the, my home or whatever when it gets threatened it really shows us how absorbed we really are mm -hmm. that's how i took it like that yeah i mean that's like attachment it's also mm. like material concept mm. but anyway i think absorption could be unpacked more <coughs> and and then the last statement i thought was interesting um last sentence of the paragraph says the lord is known as vaikunta which i can't remember hearing that before and his abode is also known as Vaikuntha. Of course, I understood that the spiritual world is considered Vaikuntha, uh, a, a place of no misery or no distress. Such Vaikuntha realization and worship can be made possible by the transcendental form and senses. So, so the Lord is also known as Vaikuntha. Interesting. Mm. Think we should finish there? Yeah. All, All right. right. So uh, we'll come back with text number 10. 10. Uh, next time. Thank you all very much for tuning in and uh, have a very Krishna conscious day and yes. read Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. And if Bye. you're still there, go for Chandra. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. May Shishigarni Thai send their blessings to yes. you. Yes. Lots of blessings. Lots of Prashadam. <laughs>